Hello everyone and welcome to Forever Rugby on Forever Sports for today's Springbok, a bit of an analysis video uh, talking about uh, the Springbok team that Rassi Erasmus has selected and looking at why he has made some of the decisions he has and uh, why he has picked some of the players he has. Basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at uh, the way Ireland play, for example, um, what has made them so successful, a bit of a comparison on kind of the way these teams play because we're probably talking about the best attacking team in the world versus the best defensive team in the world. Um, so Ireland score tries for fun. We know this. They are an, an attacking uh, machine. They really are. And and you can you can you know either choose to ignore that or you can embrace it and say right. We all know that Ireland are probably the best attacking team in the world. Um, they've got the stats to prove it. How do you stop that? Well, you put them against the best defensive team in the world, uh, who score the fewest tries, for example, and um, have got one of the best defensive systems. Uh, World Rugby has ever really seen um, in the form of the Springboks. And again, Springbok fans, you can either embrace the fact that we're a great defensive team or you can try and deny it. Um, I, for one, choose to embrace it and talk about the fact that I think that's what's made us so um, impressive in the past. For example, it's won us World Cups and I don't see why we need to move away from that or be scared of, uh, of admitting that. So let's have a look, for example, at the team, shall we? Which is the team that Rusty Rasmus has picked. Now, the big interesting selections um, are the following. Quagga Smith at eight, Malcolm Marks off the bench, Mark Van Staden off the bench. Um, very interesting selections with regards to, first of all, Malcolm Marks coming back from injury. We wondered if he might start, when he might come off the bench. Um, I think if he was playing his best rugby and been playing consistently, I think he probably would have started. They would have tried to get up sort of 60 minutes out of him. Um, I do think we're getting a bong even now, we give him a sort of 40 minute run, and Malcolm Marks will probably get much the same amount of time. Uh, the big one is everybody's sort of wondering why Quagga Smith not an Evan Ruiz. This, for me, is an island call. You know, as much as, you know, we are a team that likes to focus on ourselves, Quaker Smith, for me, starting Malcolm Stone on the bench is the battle of the breakdown. And how you try and beat Ireland is you've got to slow things down and you've got to try and disrupt the way they play. I'm going to go through some of the stats and talk about what that kind of means. Um, and I think that's the, the big indication for me about this is that Marco van Staden selection on the bench. Uh, not that he's, for example, as good over the ball as a Quacker Smith, but you've got players in Malcolm Marks, Marco van Staden coming on off the bench who are fetchers, who are good on the ground. Um, and in the starting lineup, you know, you're going to rely a lot on um, Quacker Smith, who I think had the, had the most turnovers in world rugby last year, uh, in international rugby. Uh, you're going to have to rely on C.A. Gleesey doing a lot of breakdown work as well. And uh, you'll need to see, uh, for example, something like Damon Day Lindy in the midfield. In fact, in fact, actually, both 12s, we expect Bandiaki to be named a 12 um, this weekend. Both 12s, very, very good. In fact, quite similar type of players in many ways in terms of the really physical carrying ability. Um, but also, they're really good in terms of the, the, the sort of the, I mean, kind of the battle stats. You know, they hit a lot of racks. They're very good at the breakdown. Both of them very good over the ball. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that kind of battle. Now, I think Quaker Smith is the very interesting um, pick, isn't he? And uh, this is one of the major reasons I think he is picked. Two things, for example. Uh, first of all, turnover king. He is so, so, so good on the ground. Ten turnovers during the Rugby World Cup, averaging more than a turnover per game, um, which is incredible when you consider that, you know, he came off the bench for majority um, of, of, the, um, of the World Cup. I mean, he played just an average of less than 40 minutes. So, you know, he's playing less than a half of rugby during the World Cup and yet averaging basically two turnovers um, a game. So, you know, if he were to play full 80s, for example, um, you know, then that would probably be double and you'd be looking at almost sort of three to four turnovers um, during the game. So that's how good he is on the ground. Also, very importantly, defensively, might not be the same sort of physical presence as a Jasper Visa, a Dwayne Vermeulen, um, for example, um, but from an attack point of view, does know how to score points, does score tries. Um, but I think what's very important over here is he is very good defensively. Missed just two tackles during the World Cup, uh, 32 tackles made. It's that scramble defense, you know, his pace across the park, which I think sets him apart um, potentially this weekend. You know, Ireland, and we're going to look at their stats, will break past the Springbok lines. That's going to happen. We will have scramble defense. The likes of a JC Creel, I think, is going to be incredibly important this weekend. Kurt Lawrence, Chazen Colby, incredibly important. Quaka Smith, arguably maybe even the most important. I mean, we all think about that incredible sort of desperate uh, scrambled tackle by Warren Whiteley against the All Blacks. I think it was back in 2017, 2018 could have been. 
Um, and no, I don't think anybody, other, I don't think any other player in the current squad could do that except for Quaker Smith in terms of having the pace and the, the athleticism to be able to get back and make that kind of last ditch tackle. Um, let's have a look at, um, at Ireland, for example. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start um, by looking at our the, the key stats between the two teams. So we're going to move into this screen over here. Right, there we go. Um, this is during the World Cup, by the way, basically a comparison of Ireland versus South Africa uh, from the World Cup, looking at some of the key stats. Now, interestingly enough, um, obviously, the big thing to consider when these stats is that the Springboks did play two more games. Um, so that some of the stats will be slightly inflated, but um, that's just kind of the way the cookie crumbles. So... Still, despite playing two more games, conceded fewer tries, scored fewer tries, for example, um, as well as fewer points. Ireland score points. That's what they do. They 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 run their their opposition rugged pretty early. They score points. They kind of outscore you. Um, you look at tax completed. Uh, Ireland with a higher percentage, but when we look at the defense, Springboks' defensive system does not rely on first on tackles. It relies on stopping momentum. The kind of hits. You know, if you've been around the block, you'll kind of know that. Ireland generally don't kick the ball a lot. We can look at that in the Six Nations. Compared to Supreme Locks, you obviously do. Ireland play a lot of 10 um, as well. Um, so if we look at... But the big thing for OBS is Ireland don't lose the ball. They don't kick it away, for example, very often. And they are very good at the breakdown in terms of keeping the ball. Um, and that, I think, is an area where the Supreme Locks are really going to target uh, this weekend. So we look at the attack, for example. Ireland carrying more than the box despite having a two or three games. Um, you know, box just running more meters, um, clean breaks, I don't have more, offloads more, defenders beaten more, tries more. Again, that's within there's two games fewer. So we are talking about an attacking giant. And over there, you kind of think going, well, that's like a non-comparison, and the box are nowhere near them. This is where the box come into their own. Look at the amount of tackles that they're making. And look at the dominant tackles. The physicality on display, that is the big thing from the box. Making more than double the amount of um, dominant tackles. Yes, to paying two more games, but still double the amount of uh, of dominant tackles. Despite missing so many more tackles, you know, Fafta Kirk, for example, is flying off this line, stopping the momentum, and then we saw some, and they're missing big hits. Um, so it's that kind of combination, isn't it? Stopping the, the momentum and then, you know, making those big hits, making yourself feel, feel um, known. One thing about uh, Ireland, for example, uh, Springboks, by the way, didn't have a single card until the group, the, the playoff stage, just fun fact. Uh, penalties conceded, though Ireland don't concede a lot of penalties, um, and, and that's an interesting one. So that was kind of a bit of a comparison of what we kind of did during the World Cup. Yes, it's a very basic comparison, but let's look at the Ireland uh, during the, the Six Nations, shall we? And we'll look at a couple of their key players as well. Uh, so this is the Six Nations website, all the statistics over there. Um, let's, I'm looking at the 24 edition, obviously. So... This is the big thing. Ireland scoring 19 tries and the t and more points than France, who, you know, obviously had some big wins against various different teams like, you know, in Italy and, and, and Wales, for example. But Ireland scoring lots of tries. You had three teams, tried in 13, Scotland with 12, Italy 9, Ireland way ahead with 19. Um, that's a big thing from them. If you look at, uh, obviously, then successful conversions, for example, despite not having the best goal kicking percentage, if they had so many conversions um, that it was pretty easy to, uh, to kind of notch up the most conversions. This is the big thing over here. They carry the ball a hell of a lot, and they get into the 22. They've got the best, um, I think when they looked at the World Cup, they had a, the best stat in terms of plays that results in them getting into the 22, or carries that results in them getting into the 22. Carrying a lot of meters. They keep ball in hand, they spread the ball left, right, and they make their way up the park with ball in hand rather than through the boot. Um, generally, they've, they've got that sort of attacking shape, which creates so much space for them to get over the advantage line. Um, hence, topping the meters gained, topping the, the total passes also by quite a lot. You know, they go left to right very quickly. Not necessarily the biggest offloaders, you know, genuine passes, genuine sort of use, use of the space. Lots of line breaks. You know, they create those, those half gaps to get their players through, um, which is something that the box really need to, to focus on. But this is what I mean in terms of your sort of kicks and play, not kicking as much as a lot of other teams, for example. Um, not to say that they don't kick, they do kick. Um, and, and, and all teams kick, the best teams in the world kick. But it is not, you know, their primary weapon, for example. Um, uh, apart from that, for example, we look at uh, breakdown steals. They're pretty good over there. This, for me, is one of the most important stats, is their ruck speed. And that's why I think, you know, we've got three potential fetches. A Cicleese, who does really good work at the breakdown in terms of hitting rucks. We've got to slow down the ball. Thankfully, we're not going to have to worry about Jamison Gibson Park. Craig Casey expected uh, to probably start. 56% of their rucks during the Six Nations were 
within zero to three seconds. And after that, 26% of that between four to six seconds. So they're only 11% of their rucks are over six seconds. They use the ball quickly. They're not going to sit there, line everything up, look at exactly what's plotting, decide who's going, and then they go. Gibson Park in particular, very decisive, left, right, short, far, they move that ball. Um, they are very mobile. They do get the ball moving around a lot. Scrum battle is going to be interesting. Um, I think Andrew Porter on his day is a very good scrummager, but I think he gets away with a lot. So I think if that gets raised, for example, I think that we can have a really good go at that Irish scrum. Um, the second most successful in the Six Nations, but I don't think it is foolproof. I think it can be um, had. And I think Lionel Steele's over here, very important. Tyburn, Pito Marnie, quality players. At, at the line arts and uh, that's going to be something we are going to have to contend with quite a lot. Let's look at some of the break, the, the sort of key players, shall we? And the big, as in, the big news for me is the lack of Jamson Gibson Park. You got three tries assists himself during that Six Nations. Dan Sheehan, uh, top try scorer. Those are not always, by the way, more tries. He is somebody that likes to get in the mix and, and carries very well. Um, Jack Crowley was uh, the third highest uh, point scorer. Um, Bundy Aki, Kellen Doris. Obviously, a big uh, carriers in the midfield as well as off the back of the scrum. Ken Doris is relentless. He's not necessarily as big and physical, I think, as a Jack Conan. Is a bit quicker, but carries so much and is pretty relentless. James Lowe is a big player uh, for, for, for Ireland. Um, you know, most meters carried, most meters gained. Um, but a lot of that, again, was the space that was created by James Gibson Park and the likes who, who do put themselves in such good positions over there. Uh, James Lowe topping up the line breaks as well, up and down the line breaks. Uh, this is an interesting one over here. You look at kicks in play, for example. Um, James Lowe, the only non-scrum off of fly half involved in that. Gibson Park over there. Uh, and Jack Kite, but quite far down when you look at the fact that, you know, both the scrum off and fly half of Scotland up there. Finn Russell, Ben White, Thomas Williams up there. Alex Mitchell, George Ford up there. You know, got busy, McGarrick and Thomas Ramos. So not the team that dominates sort of kicks in play, for example. Um... Tackles bad. Um, obviously, they're doing a lot of tack of, of the tacks, so you know you don't often see a lot of Irish players in these sort of stats. Um, this over here, if you look at the breakdown threats, for example, and I, the reason I pull this up, despite there not being that many, is it does identify who the breakdown threats are. Josh Van is very good on the ground. Bandiaki is very good on the ground. Tyburn, Tyburn, despite being lock flank, whatever he is, is phenomenal at the breakdown. And these players are some of the reasons that they get. First of all, they can steal the ball, but also very good keeping. Um, the ball there as well. And the line of steals, as I mentioned, Tyburn in that over there at the top there. In terms of your, your takes and, and your main Tyburn as operator at the front, and as mentioned earlier, Pito Marnie is always up there as well. So that gives you kind of a bit of an idea of some of their sort of their key players um, as well as sort of the, the key areas that they that they focus on. And um, yeah, I think we very much have to slow the breakdown down um, and make sure Craig Casey's not getting clean service and quick service all in time in time and same thing i think we also need to try and steal that ball because they don't give it up a lot you know if you look at the amount of phases i mean you look at that what's a 37 phase or what it was ridiculous when new zealand had to um defend in that uh, world cup quarter final they are relentless with ball in hand and they will happily go through 20 25 phases which kind of suits the box you're kind of very much like well we'll tackle you 25 26 times if we have to so that's why it's a very interesting matchup because we're looking at sort of two teams not quite exact opposites but I think we are looking at the best attacking team versus the best defensive team, a team that kicks off nine, a team that play, can play off 10 a lot. Um, in Jack Crowley, Springboks don't play off 10 a lot. Um, they don't often go and play off Pollard. It'd be interesting to see if we do play a bit more of 10 this weekend, for example. Um, but a very interesting sort of small mini battle is happening in the game. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Smash a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Steve. I'll chat to you soon.